If you haven't worked with master lists before, I'll give you just a quick introduction to them. Uh, here's the master list button. I can set up uh, as many different master lists as I like for my office, and they contain information that's used in lots of different forms. So for instance, I could have a list of the personnel in my office, which I update in one place as things change, and then all of the forms that use that information are updated automatically. So I don't have to go around to each form that uses that information. I will show you that in action here with a form I've got. This is a pleading form that pulls in information from a master list to fill in the signature block. So the form user just selects a couple of signers here for the pleading. This list of signers is drawn from the master list of attorneys in the office. And then when they click the fill button, even though they have only selected the names of the signers, the form goes out to that master list of attorneys and pulls in the bar number of each of those attorneys. So it has access to all sorts of information that the form user doesn't even need to be aware of, uh, let alone remember and type it out themselves. So now I'll show you how master lists are different in version 2.2. Closing that document and opening a second one here. Here I've got a form, uh, water usage rights. The idea in this form is that the form user is going to answer one question. They're going to tell what county the property is located in. And then the form is going to automatically fill in not only the name of the county here, but also the name of the water district, the address of the water district, uh, a filing fee, uh, and then the name of the water district again here. That information is all going to be stored in a master list. So I'm going to create a master list right now, going to the master list button. And I don't yet have a list of water districts, so I'm creating a brand new master list by clicking this green plus, and I will name it water districts. How many columns do I want in the list? I'm going to guess three as a starting point, but I'll, I'll be free to add and delete columns as I go. I'll just start with three. And this is the new master list editing screen. It's just a regular Word document. Uh, I can do all of my master list creation right here in Word instead of in the interface the way it was before. Uh, it wants headings across the top. So I'll type the first heading will be the county. Uh, second heading will be the district name. Third column will be the address. And I do need a fourth column here uh, so that I can put in the filing fee for each uh, district. And the way I manipulate the table is just like any other table in Word. I can use all of the table editing commands here. And if I forget how to do that, scroll down to the bottom, and here in the footer is a list of the most commonly used commands to add and delete columns and rows and rearrange things in your table. So I'm going to, just to the right of the address column here, I want to insert a column, so I'm clicking the Insert Right button here. And that's just an ordinary word command. And now I have a fourth column to work with. I'll call that Filing Fee. And I'm ready to start filling in my information. I'll fill in one row here. King County, I'll say the district name is Water District number six. The address, 111 Main Street. And previously in master lists, you were restricted to a single line of text for each entry. But now you can put multiple lines in an entry. Suite uh, 17, uh, Seattle, Washington which is really handy for addresses and other information too. And then the filing fee I'll say is $15 there. So I've filled in one row of the table. As in any Word table, if you want to add another row, just press tab when your cursor is sitting in the last cell there. That adds another row and you can type even more entries there. Another nice thing about this arrangement is I can copy and paste from Excel. 
So if I happen to have an Excel spreadsheet that lists some of this information, I can go over to Excel and copy some cells. I'm just selecting these nine cells and pressing Control C to copy them. Then closing Excel and getting my cursor back in Word and I can paste that information into my Word table. Word is a little fussy about pasting cells into a table. If I put my cursor right here and press Control V to paste, it jams all nine of those cells into a single cell in the table, which is not what I want. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. And instead, I find that I have better luck if I create the uh, target cells and select them and then press Control V to paste. It doesn't work every time. It's kind of inconsistent, but if you try a couple of times, you'll eventually get it to behave correctly. Let me show you one other way that it sometimes comes in incorrectly. If I were to select too many cells here and press Control V, notice now that my first column has been repeated over in the last column there, which is not what I want. So I'm going to undo that and again go back to just selecting exactly the right number of target cells before I paste and that will generally give you the results you want. So I've got several counties in here. I will fill in a couple more filing fees. Let's suppose Thurston County is uh, 650 and Kitsnohomish will say does not have a filing fee and Kitsap County is $10. There's my master list. You might be inclined at this point to hit the save button in Word, but that's not how to save a master list. Instead, pay attention to this line here that says after editing, click the master list button on the form tool tab to save changes. So I'll do that, the form tool, and there's my master list button again. It's the same button I used to start this whole process. That opens the master list screen and it has read in all the information that I typed into this table and it's ready to save that for me. I have three buttons up here. If I hit save and close, all of this will be saved in my master list. If I change my mind and want to continue editing, just click the middle button there and I can come back and make any changes that are needed. Maybe I want to abbreviate this. Then I can go back to the master list screen. Uh, if I hit cancel changes, all of the changes I've uh, made will be lost, so be very careful with that. What I really want to do is save and close, and that master list is now created, and I jump back to the form I was working on initially. If I need to make changes to that master list at any point, I can return to it with the master list button, select it here, and click edit to open it back in that editing screen. Make any changes that are necessary and then once again remember to save your changes. Don't just close that document without saving. Now that I've got that master list, I'm going to use it to uh, finish off this form. Down here in the answer box, I'm going to make this a smart answer with the smart answer button and I will make it a choice type answer and I want the choices to be drawn from a master list. I want to choose from the master list of water districts and I'll click OK. And now all of the uh, items I entered in that master list show up here. Notice that the answer box, the choice box here, always lists the first column of your master list. So it's very important what you choose to put in column one of every master list. Each item in the first column has to be a unique item uh, so that the person choosing an item ha can distinguish between them. So let's say I'm filling in this form for King County. I'll click the fill button and oh, I forgot to put in my fields. Let's do that first. Step one is to create the smart answer. Step two is to add the fields to your form. So I will right here put in a field for the county name, click the field button, insert field, and I'm choosing from the first column of the master list, which is the county name, done. Here I want the name of the water district as the first part of the address, so I'll put in a field. Again, the same uh, county field, but this time I'm choosing 
the district name. Done. Here I want the address, field insert, choose the address column. That's going to give me more than one line when I have a multi-line address. Here I'll go with the filing fee, field, insert from the filing fee column. And here I want the district name to appear again. Rather than create it, I will just copy it from above where I already had the, the district name and I'll paste it down here. So that should finish my form. Let's try that out now. I've filled it in with the County of King. So when I click the Fill button, I get all that information that's related to King County. And that's how master lists work. Now uh, in version 2.2. The next feature I'm going to cover is uh, a new capability we didn't have before, and that is that conditions can now be based on secondary columns in a master list. Let me explain what that means. I'm going to bring up that master list we created a moment ago. Previously, I could only create conditions based on this first column. I could create a condition that says, if my form user chooses King County, then do something. But now I can base conditions on any column in this master list. And I'm going to do that in this form right now. Notice that when I choose Snohomish as the county, Snohomish doesn't have a filing fee. So when I fill in the form, I end up with this paragraph that doesn't make any sense. What I would really like as the form creator is to make it so this paragraph does not even appear when Snohomish County is chosen. Or even, in fact, whenever the filing fee is empty, I want to remove that paragraph. I'm going to reset the form and show you how to accomplish that. I'm going to create a condition for this entire paragraph. I select the paragraph and then hit the condition button. And I will add a condition. Let's move it here so we can see what we're doing. I want this paragraph to appear only when the filing fee column is not empty. This box here is what's new in version 2.2. Previously, I couldn't select a column here. So when the filing fee column is not empty, this paragraph will appear. But when it is empty, this whole paragraph will be removed. I'll click Done to finish that condition. And now when I fill in the form with Snohomish County selected, there is no second paragraph. But when I fill in the form with another county selected that has a filing fee, the second paragraph does appear. This is a really good example of leveraging just one single response from the form user to change all sorts of stuff in the finished product form.